All right, what's up guys? Today we're gonna be looking at how to identify and operate a compact farm tractor, whether it's John Deere or whatever brand you happen to have. The controls are the same, so if you wanna know how to drive it, stay tuned. All right guys, so I always start with a walk around of the tractor. So these, most of these tractors are either two or four wheel drive, it really depends. On the front of the tractor here, this is the loader. Um, this is used to scoop dirt, to lift equipment, to basically do whatever you need it to do. It's just a giant scoop. Um, these are, this particular model is a four wheel drive. You can tell if you look under here because there will be geared hubs by the front tires. If it's not four wheel drive, they'll just basically be attached. That's pretty much it. On the back here, you have your accessory option. So so most of these tractors utilize some kind of a three-point hookup system with a drive shaft in the center. So basically what I'm referring to, so one, two, and three hookup spots, and then this is the drive shaft, which then is powered by the hydraulics of the tractor. So that's the basic walk around. All right, guys, so I always feel that the best way to show you how to drive something is from the driver's seat. All right, guys, so the controls on this machine are really pretty simple. They're relatively similar to a car um, in some ways. So up here on the dash, you've got the, this is not a speedometer, this is actually an um, a tachometer. This tells you the speed of the engine. Here you've got your fuel gauge and your temperature gauge. Now the temperature is very important because one of the few ways you can truly destroy a diesel engine is by overheating it and blowing it up. Now when you turn the key, your lights are gonna come on. So these are basically warning lights. So this is your oil light, your parking light, your battery light. Over here, this is your glow plug light. Um, this is your tractor, honestly, I'm not sure what that is. And then this tells you whether your accessory on the back, whether that's a deck mower or a rototiller or whatever is running or not. So those are the lights and that is the dashboard. Now when I turn the tractor on right here is going to be my odometer. It's gonna tell me how many miles are on the tractor or hours actually, they registered in hours of use. All right, so that is basically it. So down here is my key. So off position, so when I turn the key to the on position, it heats up the glow plugs and it basically preps the tractor to be started. Now, right here, this little, this little dial is gonna control your lights. So if you've got headlights, so it's got warning lights, low beam and high beam headlights. Now my tractor, the headlights have been ripped off years ago, so that doesn't do much. Now over here on the side, you've got your four wheel drive engagement button. So I always just leave it engaged in four wheel drive. So that's that. And then when you pull this up, that engages whatever is back here. So basically pulling this up is going to activate your drive shaft right here, which will run to whatever piece of equipment is on the back of the tractor, whether that's a mower, a rototiller or what have you. Now, over on this side are your gears. Now, this is not like a manual transmission because this actually has multiple gearboxes. So, this has A, B, neutral, and C. So, basically, what these are, these are different speeds at which the tractor will go if you want to put it in layman's terms. So, let, for example, I'm in B right now, but say I were to put it in A, which is the slowest, most powerful, um, gearing for the tractor. Then in one, that's going to be your lowest, most powerful gear for this tractor. So it's a combination of A, B, and C, and then one, two, three, four for the gears. So for example, if I'm mowing through thick brush, I'm going to run the tractor in A, two. So that's a, that's a gear combination that's going to operate at a low speed that's lots of power, has lots of power to do whatever you need. Now, if I'm just trying to move from one point to the next, I'm going to put it in C, which is my fastest gear, and then I'm going to put it in three or four because these are going to be your fastest gears. Now, like a manual transmission, this tractor does have a clutch, so your clutch pedal is right here. So when I'm moving gears, it's not going to move from A, B, to C, or from one, two, three, four, unless I have this clutch pedal pushed in. So if the tractor were running, what I would do is I would push the clutch pedal in, I would select the gear, the A, B, or C that I want, and then I would select the gear that I want, just like a manual transmission. Then I would slowly release the clutch while making sure that the throttle is engaged enough, either through the gas pedal or through the throttle control, that the tractor doesn't lunge and die. Now, over here, is the final thing to show you this is the brake so these brakes are are weird because they're separated one side and the other but basically these two pedals 
are hooked together. So when you push down on this, it acts as the brake pedal for your tractor. All right, guys, the final thing to show you is the parking brake, which is actually broken on my tractor. But to engage the parking brake, all you do is you push down on the on the brake pedals and you pull this out. You click it out till it clicks in place. And that is supposed to keep the brakes engaged. As you can see, mine is broken, so it doesn't work. But hey, is what it is. You live with what you got. So let's get started and I'll show you exactly what I would do on a typical day to start this tractor. So first thing I would do is I'd look down here at the key and I would turn the glow plugs on because one click over, not all the way, not engaging the starter, just one click, engage the glow plugs, lets them warm up. Then I would look over here at my forward and reverse and make sure it is in neutral. So you can see reverse, forward, and center is neutral. I would then go down and I would push in on the clutch pedal with my foot. I always just push in on the clutch just because it's a smart thing to do. If you drive manual transmission, you're going to do this too. Um, next over here, I'm going to look at my throttle and I'm going to make sure the throttle is all the way in the down position. You never want to start a tractor or a diesel truck when the throttle's all the way up. It's just bad for the engine. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reach down and start the tractor. So your tractor is now starting. It is in neutral, so it's not going anywhere and the throttle's all the way down. So let's look at what the controls on this tractor are gonna do. So throttle control, obviously, speeds and slows down the throttle. So right here, this is your tachometer. This tells you how fast the engine is going. Over here to my right is this big lever here. What this actually does is controls the front loader on the tractor. All right, guys, well, the tractor's too loud to really talk to you while it's operating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna cut between the tractor and this lever. So pulling this forward raises the bucket up. Pushing the lever forward lowers the bucket down. Pulling the lever to the right tilts the bucket down. And pulling the lever to me raises the bucket back up. Those are the basic four basic controls for this, this lever here. What this essentially only does is controls the front loader on the tractor. All right, so I'm gonna give you guys a couple uh, ideas of how this works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in A1. All right, so with the tractor in A1, what I would do is I would put this lever in forward. I would push on the gas pedal down here with my foot and I would release the clutch. And you can see we're moving forward. Now, if I wanna go backwards, pull this back towards me, and we're moving backwards. Magical and amazing. All right, so if I wanna go a little bit faster, what I'm gonna do is pull this lever all the way to C, put this in C1. Now what we're doing, so now we're going a lot faster and the same in reverse. All right, pretty straightforward there. All right, so that's pretty straightforward for how the gears work. Um, so the bucket and the gears are gonna be the main thing you use. Now, in order to raise and lower this, this as I said, what you're gonna do is you're going to start the tractor. You're gonna look back at your thing and basically all you're gonna do is pull this lever up or down. So pulling it up, raises it up and pushing it down, puts it back on the ground. Now, if you want it halfway in between, you just pull the lever halfway to the four and that's gonna raise it up halfway, pull it all the way up and it raises it all the way up and push it all the way down and it pushes it all the way down. All right, to engage the equipment on the back of your tractor, what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure your truck, your tractor is all the way down, the throttle's all the way at the lowest. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna raise up your equipment so it's off the ground. You don't never wanna start it when it's laying on the ground. Then what you're gonna do is you're simply gonna pull this up. And now, you can hear that the equipment is going. So now that it's going at idle, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna speed the engine up until, and you're gonna speed the engine up until it hits this little notch right here that says that that's the speed at which it needs to operate when it has equipment. So what I would do is I'd start it,
All right, so I would start it, get it up to that speed, and then the equipment is ready to use. To disengage it, all you do is push that button back down. It's that simple. All right, guys, to fill the tractor up, these tractors almost universally take diesel fuel, so you just simply unscrew the cap, put your diesel in, and you're good to go. So let's take a quick look under the hood of the tractor so you know what you're looking at. So this tractor has been pretty well beat up in its life, but what you got here is you got your air, you got your air filter and your radiator. So one key thing you want to keep an eye on when you're operating this tractor for long periods of time is that the air filter doesn't get too clogged up. So in order to check the air filter, all you do is you undo the latches on the side, you pull this cover off, and here you've got access to your air filter. So uh, this is the air filter on the tractor now. If it's really, really dirty, you can replace it, but if you're all out on the tractor for the day, what you can do is just knock it out, just knock some of the dust out, just get some of the excess crap out of there, then put it back on. That'll get you going and keep you going for the rest of the day, usually, but if it's really, really bad, you're going to want to replace it so that you don't get crap in your engine and actually damage your tractor permanently. This, uh, this reservoir here is gonna be your radiator fluid, so you wanna make sure that it's decently full. It's usually too dirty on there to see, so you can just unscrew the top, check and make sure you actually got fluid in there, and that it's decent. Um, you'll know this because the tractor will overheat if you're low on this, so you can keep an eye on that. The air filter, um, the tractor will also overheat quickly if the air filter is extra dirty. Um, other than that, there's not a whole lot else to these pieces of equipment. They do take a little bit of getting used to with the multiple gearboxes and the varying speeds. However, they're really very simple once you get the hang of it. Um, yeah, hey, if you want to know how to hook up equipment to the back of the tractor, check the link below. I've got other videos on how to do that. All right, guys, well, that is about it. These tractors are really very simple to operate. However, they do take a little bit of getting used to once you first get on them. So, hey, hopefully this uh, showed you exactly what you needed to know. I appreciate you for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.